I will be talking about the 2016 AISC updates to both the main specification as well as the seismic provisions for structural steel buildings. Uh, these are uh, now being adopted, as, as you should uh, probably all recognize at this point. Uh, they have been adopted into ASCE 7 uh, 2016, as well as a, uh, IB, the IBC for 2018. And all of our state jurisdictions, local jurisdictions, should be in the process of finalizing uh, the adoption of those in their local for your local building codes. And, and for many people, that'll be January 1 of 2020, uh, in some places, July 1 of 2020. So uh, while these were finished a few years ago by AISC and have been available for a while off their website, um, I think people are really starting now to kind of dive in because they are going to be used on all your projects sort of going forward from this point. So with that, we'll get into it. And uh, first, I'll talk about the main specification, AISC 360, and then I'll get into the seismic provisions after the break. OK, so uh, overview on the main specification, our 360 document. And, and hopefully, many of you have been working with and very familiar with the 2010 edition of the main specification. So I'll be just focusing on changes that we've made to 2000 in 2016. Um, and format things are all pretty much the same, although there's a couple of things that might have changed a little bit. Uh, just a little bit first on the Committee on Specifications that I now have the privilege of chairing. Um, the committee has 45 members it, uh, with um, three, uh, 13 task committees that work on the specific elements of the, the two documents, uh, 341, or three documents actually, 360, the main spec, 341, the seismic provisions, and then N690, is the nuclear spec for for steel buildings. Um, we uh, the the 45 members uh, are what we call balanced uh, participation, and I'll talk about that in the next slide. Um, and just to note that we do follow what we call ANSI accredited procedures, the American National Standards Institute. Um, they write the, they force us to write rules that follow their procedures to make sure we're getting a true consensus process uh, with our standards. OK, so what does accreditation mean? Um, as, as I mentioned, a balanced committee. So of those 45 members, there are 15 each of industry members, which would be people that work on the industry side, whether they're with uh, steel fabricators or erectors or uh, mills that might be involved. Uh, consultants are, are practicing structural engineers. And then uh, general interest is uh, or, or primarily used uh, for uh, academics that do a lot of work in the steel area, whether it's research and or teaching. Um, each ballot has requirements on participation as well as approval that you can see there. So we have to have sort of a super majority uh, to get ballots approved. Um, there's also public reviews. And hopefully uh, you or your organi local organizations are participating in some of those public reviews because that's very important to us to make sure that we're picking up things that uh, practicing engineers across the country feel are important to the standards. And any time a negative vote, whether it comes from someone on, on the committee uh, or from the public, has to be resolved um, in some way uh, going forward. So we don't uh, ever sort of not take care of any, any uh, negative votes that come through. So a little bit on the mission statement for AISC. Um, pretty short and uh, hopefully get, or captures really the, uh, the essence of what the, the, the organization or the institute is trying to do with its specifications. Uh, we talk about a practice-oriented specification for structural steel buildings uh, that provides life safety um, as well as economical systems with hopefully predictable behavior and response and then efficient use. And that's really by um, those of us in the design profession to, so that hopefully the, the, the specs and the standards are, are as easy to use as possible. We recognize there's probably some areas that are pretty pretty complex, but uh, the intent is for them to be uh, easy to implement as much as possible. So let's talk a little bit about the goals for the specification. You can kind of see here sort of the overarching things that were set as we started work on these back in probably 2009 or so. Um, so implementing only what we felt was essential changes, making sure we were coordinated with AI, ASCE 7 and other standards documents, AWS, ACI, et cetera. 
um, pick up any new research that we felt would uh, help with our design practices or to pick up any gaps that might have been involved. Um, potentially provide for more efficient design, get rid of some maybe superfluous requirements that we felt uh, weren't helpful, um, and uh, fix omissions, broaden scope. You can see in increase the usability and transparency. That's always um, on our minds. And again, that's where practicing engineers um, can provide really good input to us on that, where they don't understand something, it probably needs to be re rewritten or recast in some way. And then editorial content and making sure things like our commentary and user notes are picking up um, the important things and helping the, um, uh, uh, the the engineering community to use the documents. Um, we'll be go everything that I'll be talking about change wise should catch at least one of these options. 